everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature Event, checking with 2775V Jackson Area Robotics, doing absolutely phenomenal, both here at Speedway, and it's had a great season so far, Triple Crown recently as well, so can't wait to see what they bring here. Uh, of course, if you saw them last year, awesome performances as well, too, winning their division at Worlds, multiple Signature Events, uh, so Jackson Area Robotics really got it going through multiple seasons. We're going to do an awesome overview of this robot. Totally new from a couple of events ago too and looking really good. Uh, of course, covering their awesome lift mechanism. We have some cool stuff uh, with some drop downs, talking about some PID control, all this coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Sammy, we've got a lot to unpack in this robot here, but I think we've got to start with the huge lift that you have on your bot, multifunction, I love to hear about it, and a bunch of other things you'll be covering as well. All right, so um, just here we have a four bar lifting mechanism with an offset linkage. So we have it mounted here and here, to where it tilts a little bit back. At the very top, it's got itself a pretty large tilt. Um, that gives us a higher angle to allow us to shoot over other opponent blockers and uh, gives us a good grouping on the other side of the field. Um, now the point of this whole lifting mechanism is this launcher at the very top. Um, we've got ourselves here a slip gear, which is just a gear with some teeth notched out of it. Um, what that allows us to do, it will let us pull back this catapult. Um, and then whenever it gets to the notched out part, these rubber bands here will pull it forward and allow it to launch a tri ball that is placed up here. That gives us really good, really fast match loads. For your uh, match loads, is it just uh, you're toggling a button and it's automated? Are there any sensors um, or anything like that? We just run a macro. So we press these two buttons here on the remote. Um, it deploys down this little clamp. It lifts up the lift and starts shooting. Then I can just let go of it and the lift will go down. You mentioned your lift is getting really up high. A couple teams that we've also interviewed who are starting to go with that angled type of uh, uh, blocker as well too. How have you been able to negotiate around those? Um, we have some mechanisms, mechanisms that we have here that we haven't put on yet. Sure. Just some strategies that we've been thinking about um, but haven't started yet just so people don't get the edge yet. Um, uh, but one, some of the ways that we've done that uh, is really just with that high angle. Uh, a lot of teams, their blockers just aren't ready for how extreme, how high we're going up with that. So even when teams come to block us, we're still able to shoot over it because their blocker is just going to be at the front of our robot, but we've got this all the way in the back. Is that something that you think you're going to have ready for playoffs here at the Indy SIG event? Absolutely. All right, so make sure you uh, watch out uh, the match archives on that when this comes out as well, too. Uh, talk to me about your uh, wings as well, the deployment of them and how they're overall uh, comprised. Of course. So these wings here on the side, they're just powered by a piston on each side, pretty simple. They deploy out. Um, this has two primary functions. One gives us great plowing and pushing for skills autonomous, skills driving, and for match play. But on top of that, you see they've also got a bit of a curve here. Just uh, heat them up with a heat gun, give them that bend. Uh, what this allows us to do is push them over the barrier, push tri balls over the barrier in large groups, which um, is actually a larger swing than just taking tri balls from your zone and putting them in your goal. So it gives us a really large point advantage early and late into the game and is always a viable strategy. As we record this here, you're currently ranked six in the world in skills so far. Uh, have these uh, additions really attributed to uh, you ranking so well in skills competition? Absolutely. We would not be anywhere close to where we are if we did not have these deployable wings. Really cool. Great, so I got to talk about a couple other mechanical aspects uh, up here as well. Of course, your uh, intake, and then uh, you have a, a drop down as well too. I want to hear a little bit more about on uh, how uh, that's helping you out in regards to uh, launching uh, tri balls from the match loads. Yes, so our intake is a really important um, component in our game because we need to we need to manipulate tri balls across the field. So this operates using gear ratios which is powered by a single motor actually. Back here, it spins inward to collect tri balls using these stretched out rubber bands. We call this a rubber band ramp because the tri balls slide up over it to stay in place. And then we can expel them by spinning it the other way. And this is how we push tri balls into the goal. Yeah, those bottom rubber bands, I've seen a couple of our teams too. They're super effective at keeping the tri balls in, uh, which is awesome as well. Talking about the uh, bar clamp you have, uh, I'd love to see it deploy. Uh, just talk a little bit more about the overall packaging for it too when you're looking. Uh, when was this actually added onto your robot? 
this is powered by a, a piston and um, originally we only had this part to um, allow us to feed in the tribal so we added zip ties which don't look like much but they're really effective and allowing us to always touch that bar. Rocky, we got to talk about uh, the program on your robot. Uh, I'd love to hear just about the uh, overall drivetrain, what you're doing from a PID side as well too, and I know we'll also be covering some odometry on your bot. Yeah, so for these are our tracking wheels. They basically allow us, the, the robot at least, to track where it is, like on the field. So we're running two controllers to make the robot go for programming. We've got one for the robot and one for the field. The robot controller is a PID, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. It's really simple. Basically, if you tell the robot to go forward 12 inches, it sees how far it has to go, and then it figures out how much it needs to accelerate and then deaccelerate so it doesn't overshoot its goal. Um, looking uh, at, at from your PID, I know we'll be talking about odometry in a moment as well too, but how are you combining those two together overall um, um, to get feedback? Okay, so basically the odometry lets us see the field as more of a coordinate plane instead of just telling it to go forward like a specific amount. Um, so the coordinate plane, you can tell it to go to a specific like point on the field, uh, which help, this is more accurate and then this is for the, the PID is for the speed. All right, Samuel, uh, as we wrap up with odometry, I know we touched a little bit about it, but I'd love to hear yeah. more of why you uh, chose to go with odometry as well too. Uh, with the robot, any advice to teams who are maybe looking at uh, implementing odometry in the future? Yeah, of course. So uh, one of the large advantages that you can get with odometry is that if you hit the field wall, if you hit that bit large barrier in the middle, uh, or if you're pushing in tri balls, um, it'll mess up your robot a little bit if you're just using a PID based off of the motor encoders. Because what will happen often is you'll get wheel slippage where the wheels are spinning, but your robot isn't actually moving anywhere. So those tracking wheels help negate some of that inconsistency because they're not powered by anything. They're just um, hooked up to some rotation sensors. So it'll know where it is at all times. That way, if it messes up during an earlier portion, it can still be correct in later portions. Is that, um, from, a, from a down tree, is that something you're also utilizing in autonomous as well, or are you strictly looking more PID from that side? Uh, during our autonomous, we are using odometry everywhere. Okay, gotcha. One of the main ways that you can actually implement it is that it allows you for certain sections of the code to code it, a, I don't want to say lazier, but a little messier, sure. right? Um, which sometimes might not be ideal if you're just going off of a drivetrain relative PID controller, because it'll be inconsistent. But because we have that odometry, we can reset at points and then have our later movements still be accurate. Very cool. Well, Jackson here Robotics, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your team and your robot. Uh, congrats on a great season so far. I know you're looking for big things here at the uh, Speedway Signature event, so we can't wait to see how you do, and good luck the rest of the season as well. Thank you very much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.